Hello friends, here in this video we will see a derivation of load acting perpendicular to bolt axis and for that here we have a diagram. In this diagram there is a bracket which is attached to a wall. Here we have a bracket attached to a wall. Now as we can see at these four locations 1, 2, 3 and 4 there would be four bolts with the help of which the bracket is secured to the wall. Now if we see that the axis of the bolt it is perpendicular to this load. Load is acting in vertically downward direction whereas the axis of the bolts are horizontal. So they are perpendicular to one another. Next. Here AA it is called as the tilting edge about which the bracket would be tilted when the load is acting. The distance of bolts 1 and 2 from the tilting edge that is L1. Distance of bolts 3 and 4 from tilting edge A that is L2. Now here I can say that in this kind of loading where the load is parallel, uh, perpendicular to the bolt axis there would be two kinds of effect first once when the load is acting there are chances of these this bracket to shear off to slide in the downward direction that is the primary effect is of shear and the secondary effect is the bracket won't shear but because of the action of load the bolts would be failing because of tension so here i'll write down in this case the bracket or I'll write down the bolts are subjected to two kinds of load now those two kinds are the first one is primary shear load and then secondary tensile load so here are the two effects that first is primary shear load and the second part is secondary tensile load now when this load is acting the first effect that is the primary effect is the bracket will slide down and when the bracket slides all the four bolts they would be sheared off so I can say that since the load W is shared equally by all the four bolts so therefore primary shear load W suffix s it will be equal to capital W divided by n where n indicates the number of bolts this will be equation number one for us where n is equal to number of bolts and in this case they are four number of bolts next after this here the secondary effect is tensile and what is the meaning of this is that when the load is acting there are chances of this bracket to not to slide directly but instead of sliding directly this bracket will tilt and when this bracket tilt what will happen is the bolts they would be getting stretched and then they would be failing 
so the secondary failure is of tensile load so here i can say that since bolts are also subjected to secondary tensile load therefore let w is equal to load per unit distance on each bolt and this will be in terms of newton per mm now the value of w is it is w into l which is the capital w the load which is acting upon 2 into l1 square plus l2 square now this i will keep it as equation number second now what will happen because of secondary tensile load is that these four bolts they are not subjected to the same kind of tensile load what happens is the load or the bolt which is closer to the load that would be heavily loaded or more load would be acting on such a bolt whereas the bolts which are far away from load or closer to this fixed edge those bolts would be subjected to less load now we would be designing the bolts which are heavily loaded and for that purpose here in the diagram i can say that the bolts at l1 distance they are less loaded because they are closer to this fixed edge and far away from the load the bolts which are away from the tilting edge and closer to the load like for example bolts 3 and 4 on this axis we have bolts 3 and 4 here we have 1 and 2 so bolts 3 and 4 are heavily loaded so we would be designing bolts 3 and 4 distance is located at distance l2 now i will calculate how much is the load acting here so i'll say that therefore the bolts which are far away from the tilting edge or which are closer to the load will be heavily loaded so therefore in this case bolts 3 and 4 located at distance l2 will be heavily loaded so therefore secondary tensile load on bolts 3 and 4 that i'll write it on to the next page the secondary tensile load that will be w suffix t and it will be equal to small w multiplied by l2 now here we are getting the secondary tensile load as w into l2 because at l2 distance the bolts are heavily loaded and i'll keep this as equation number 3 so now whenever the bolts are subjected to two different kinds of stresses like there is shear and tension two different kinds of load 
In that case, we need to find out equivalent load because we directly cannot add these values. So I can say that therefore equivalent shear load that will be WS equivalent is equal to half of under root WT square plus 4 into WS square this is the equivalent shear load next similarly I will get equivalent tensile load and that will be WT equivalent is equal to half of into bracket WT plus under root WT whole square plus 4 into WS whole square so from both these equation I'll say that equation number 4 and equation number 5 we will calculate the value of equivalent load that is equivalent shear load and equivalent tensile load and then we will select any one and after this we would be calculating we would finding the when we have known the value of load suppose equivalent tensile load this value is greater then therefore this equivalent tensile load will be equal to pi by 4 dc square that is the core cross sectional area multiplied by tensile stress because it is equivalent tensile load and this will be equation number capital A and therefore from equation capital A DC can be calculated so we can design the core diameter and once we know the core diameter we can find the nominal diameter that is a greater diameter and then complete the bolt design so in this video we have seen that how to derive the formula for load acting on a bolt in which the bolt axis is perpendicular to the load